Welcome to another tutorial for the Nexion display. This time I'm going to show how to use the real-time clock and the EEPROM that is included on an enhanced version. And I'm also going to show you a few tricks when writing code, so even if you don't have an enhanced version, this video might still be helpful for you. I'm going to start by saying that I tested the accuracy of the internal RTC of my display and found it to be pretty bad especially compared to modules like the DS3231 that you can connect to Arduino. I don't know if I have a defective unit or what, but from what I can see it's pretty useless. If you're going to use the display with Arduino and need an RTC, I think it's better to use an external module with temperature compensation, or set the clock to auto sync periodically using the internet. If you test the RTC accuracy of your display, Please write the result on the comment section because I really want to know. But anyway, let's go right into the project. We're going to start by reading the values inside the real-time clock. I want to refresh the display in real time, so I read the RTC using the timer set to run every 50 microseconds. In here, I read the seconds, minutes, and so on. But for the day of the week, we get a number, so I wrote this code to convert it into text. The hour is a bit tricky because I wanted to have a 12 hour mode, and the RTC returns a value from 0 to 23 for the hours, so I need to check if 12 hour mode is enabled and do a few things to accomplish that. I'm not getting into the details on how to do that because you can later read the comments I put on the code. But what you need to remember is that we store on this variable if the 24 hour mode is enabled. If that variable is equal to 1, it means the 24 hour mode is enabled. And how do we know if 24 hour mode is enabled? We actually read the EEPROM when we load this page. With this line, we read the address 20 and store it on the variable VAH24. And how do we write to the EEPROM? Well, let's go to the settings page to look at this dual state button that is going to write the state of the button into the address 20. We only specify the starting address, but actually it's going to use a few other addresses as needed. If it's a variable, it uses 4 bytes. If it's a text, it's going to use the amount of characters plus 1. So avoid using addresses that are too close to each other. Now we just need to update the state of the dual state button when we load this page. So we go to the pre-initialize event for this page and read the EEPROM to put the button in the state recorded. If we didn't do this, it will always start at the default state, which is off. We do something similar with the brightness slider. Every time we release the slider, we store the value of the slider into the address 10. And when we load the page 0, we read that address and put that value into the variable called VA1. So we can later set the brightness as the value of the variable. Now let's go on how to set the time. You could simply run this line to add or subtract the value of any component of the RTC. But we need to make sure we send a valid value to the RTC. For example, you can't go from 23 hours to 24 hours, or from 0 to negative 1. That's why I put this to create a cycle that makes sense. I did the same for the minutes, seconds, etc. But doing this for the date, it takes more than a few lines of code because we need to consider that not every month have the same amount of days. And we also have to consider leap years. For example, this is a leap year, so if we are in February and want to increase from the day 28, we should go to 29. But if it's not a leap year, we should jump from 28 to 1. And we need to do this when changing the month and year 2. This is a leap year, so February can have a 29. But if you want to increase the year, you have to modify the day to 28. This is done automatically with the code inside every button, but it's a mess. I spent so many hours to accomplish this, so you should use my code instead of doing it by yourself. On this project, I also wanted to show you how you can copy data from one page to another. So when I press the next button, I use this code to write into the variable called VABR that is on the Arduino page with the value of the slider. 
But remember to set the variable that is on the other page as global, so we can get access from other pages. Now, when I first tried to have a text saying the word Wednesday, I noticed that the W was always lowercase. I tried many fonts available on the font generator that is on the Nexion editor, but all of them have the same issue. After some digging, I found another Nexion font generator that it didn't have this issue. So from now on, I recommend you use this to create your fonts and ideally choose a monospace font. Another problem I got was when I read the RTC for the first time, especially without a battery, I got a few invalid values. And trying to change those values using the buttons doesn't work, because they take the current value to add or subtract one. And if we have a month of 20 and subtract 1, we are giving a value outside the limits and it's not going to work. I have no idea why this happened, but my solution was to run this code every time we load the page 0. For some reason, I have to put it on the post initialize event section and not on the pre initialize event to make it work. By the way, I discovered that we can have more than 6 timers per page, so keep that in consideration. As for Arduino, I only managed to read the RTC and the EEPROM using the variables inside the display as the middleman, using the techniques I talked about in my second video. It's not ideal, but it works. My project is available on the description so you don't have to do all this from scratch. Take your time to read the comments on the code, and I hope it helps you to understand how to write code for the display. It's similar to Arduino, but more limited and strict with the format. Anyway, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer it. Cheers!